Saw One was the, the first film that I edited. I had previously been an assistant editor, but um, secretly aspiring uh, to be a director. And um, so I was very happy when they brought me on board. The, the first Saw film was very low budget, and so they were looking for people that would work for cheap. <laughs> and, I, and I fit the bill perfectly. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, I, I, once they got success with the first film, then they continued to make them. and. Uh, I was lucky enough that they continued to um, to hire me. So then ultimately, uh, I was ready to move on from the Saw franchise after Saw Three. But they made a they made a deal with me to um, stay on as editor, and then they would let me uh, direct Saw Six. So uh, that's it's been a big part of my uh, professional life. So um, how does Saw uh, Saw Three D? How does that pick up the story and move? Um, not surprisingly, we pick up right where the previous Saw film left off. Um, if, you, if you saw Saw 6, Jill, and, Jill, the wife of Jigsaw and Hoffman, his um, kind of rogue accomplice, are now enemies with each other. And so that's a big part of the storyline in, in Saw 3D. But we've got so many different things going on. There are a lot of um, narrative threads that are interweaving. We've got uh, the return of, of Dr. Gordon, the Carrie Elwes character that we really have only seen in the first Saw. Um, we have a new character played by Sean Patrick Flannery, who is a person who uh, wrote a book about his jigsaw trap experience and has now become a kind of self-help guru. He has a major role to play. Um, we have a great new police character named Gibson. So there's a lot of different things going on in the film. To what extent do you use 3D um, to, to tell your narrative? Um, you know, the 3D didn't necessarily affect the story per se that much. We, we obviously were always um, trying to imagine great ways to exploit the, the 3D technology, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a Saw movie, so the, the story itself is, um, is kind of along the lines of the sort of thing that we've seen in the past, because we really wanted to be true to what Saw really is, and not just turn it into a, you know, a marketing scam, <laughs> as it were. Um, but I think that we use the 3D well within that um, framework to make the traps look much more rich and from time to time have fun by throwing some flesh and blood directly into the <laughs> face of the audience. <laughs> so what sets Saw the series apart from, say, Nightmare on Elm Street? What, what, what makes it different? What, what makes it give it so, such great legs? Well, Nightmare on Elm Street had great legs as well, as, as you know, but um, I think that perhaps the, the, the intent of our main character, Jigsaw, has a little bit more depth than a lot of horror films. He's not really out for vengeance, although I think subliminally there's a bit of that. Really, he's, he's trying to teach people a moral lesson. Now, this is in his mind. <laughs> not that many people really would get a moral lesson out of, uh, out of Jigsaw's traps, although you will meet a few when you watch Saw 3D. Um, I think that, that because he has this kind of great depth, and he's also, he's also a genius on some levels, but a, a, a crazy man on the other, there's, there's just a lot more going on with that character. And uh, I think that's maybe how it stands above a lot of serial killer films. Do you, do you think the, the audience for Saw 3 is, is different than other horror audiences? Or is it, is it, are we all addressing the same audience? Well, I think that the Saw films have been successful just physically because they, um, the general audience that doesn't normally go see horror films likes the idea of a film that comes out every Halloween, and they like the idea that, that there's this kind of veneer of morality to the story that gives them kind of a free pass to watch people being tortured and not feel like it's a dirty experience for them. Does that make sense? And so um, uh, I think it's, it has become kind of a tradition for people. Also, until last year, we were lucky enough that no other horror films tried to come out at the same time as us. So we really had Halloween to ourselves for, uh, for a long time. So that's a big part of the success. You make a very interesting point of, of uh, the desire to watch torture without feeling bad about it. <laughs> um, is, that, is that, do you think that's, that's, that's the, at the center of it? The, the, the I think that's a big part of it. You know, because Jigsaw's put people into these situations because uh, he felt they deserved it or could, um, could actually learn something from it. it, it definitely makes it easier on the audience's minds to, to watch it. Having, see, having seen all 
all, all seven of them. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> I mean you. Oh, sorry. I thought <laughs> you I was like, wow. Do, 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 you, do you get numb to, to, to the gore? Or? Well, uh, when you're working on a film, the experience of blood and gore is, is quite a bit different because it, you, you know how it's done. And on the set, often um, it doesn't look anything like it does on the screen. So it's not, a, it's not that disgusting to actually work on the film. Um, but I do know that, that when I'm watching them, if we've done our jobs right, it has a, a great emotional impact on me, particularly when I'm seeing the film with an audience and, and um, has been the case with Saw 3D as much as the others. Really seeing people react, I react with them. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of fascinating that it's different if I'm just watching the film on my own.